Hey everybody, John with Owl, and right there's sun, but it's actually freezing today. So I've got my nice big jacket on, going for that Michelin man look. Anyway, behind me, you may recognize this. This is our Ultimate Rebel. It's actually my personal van. It looks pretty badass, but it also gets kind of all the new stuff we prototype on it. So the, the poor old girl gets cut up a lot. Well, we're gonna do some more cutting today. You may have seen a video in the past where uh, we hacked away at the fenders to install a Van Compass mudguard relocation kit. Uh, that was before the time of the Mondo kit, which is uh, a little bit more expensive, but also a little bit easier. One of the differences between those kits is that the Mondo will do the front, only the Van Compass will do the rear, right there. So why would you need to do the rear? Well, if you decide that you want a ball and you came to play, then you're gonna go with 35s. So we're gonna throw some 35s on this. Better yet, we're gonna throw 35s with the brand new owl wheels in bronze on this. Check it out. Oh, look how good those look. This is the first official glimpse for you all as to what the new owl wheel looks like. And in person, it's even better. There's all kinds of features that we built into this wheel to make it even better. Uh, got a valve stem up top for the TPMS and wait, what's that wheel? Learn more later. Anyway, I'm gonna talk all about these wheels a little bit more when we actually launch this product. But for now, we're gonna throw a set of these bronze owl wheels on this van and this actually the tire on this right now on this wheel is not a 35 so we're actually going to swap this tire out uh, and then we're going to throw these 35s on but before we do that we've already done the trimming on the front i'll show you that so you see how cut out this is the side of the bumper is trimmed you have actually removed some of the inner fender there that's all been done on this side. Now I have to repeat that on the other side. I didn't cut the other side out for the 35s. And then way back here, on the back, ooh, new ladder. Uh, way back here, you see how close that mud guard is to that rear tire? So the Van Compass one is actually gonna allow us to move this back too. So what I gotta do is take this mud guard off, take the, the wheel and tire off, take the mud guard off. I'm gonna draw kind of a, we're gonna go 1.5 inches back here, draw kind of a curved line, use a cutoff wheel to trim that out. Once that's trimmed, we're gonna reinstall this and take out a little bit of inner fender as well back here. And as far as the back of the van goes, that's pretty much it. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna show you how I do that. We've got another video to how to do the fronts if you wanna do that. So uh, hang with us and when this video is done and out, we should be on 35s. All right, so first things first, we gotta jack this vehicle up. I've actually removed my hit step, because I'm gonna do a different mod right after this, but that'll be a different video. Uh, down under there, the reason I'm showing you how to jack up your vehicle is uh, to show you what not to do. Now, most folks will jack vehicles on the differential. If you don't know what differential is, it's where your gears are and where the owl locker can go. Um, it's kind of hard for me to see, but it's right there, that big giant, some folks call it a pumpkin. Now, the problem is Mercedes, has a diff cover that whatever moron designed it hangs down below the actual casing of the diff. And so if you actually lift the vehicle on the diff, as most vehicles can be lifted, you actually destroy the cover on a Sprinter and it leaks fluid all over the ground and it ruins your day and your wallet. So uh, why am I doing it? Because I have dun, 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 the Van Compass differential skid plate, which even if we didn't sell them, dear God, get a diff skid plate. It will save you. They're not expensive, a few hundred bucks. Uh, and even if you don't go off-road, inevitably someone at some service shop will jack your vehicle up on the diff and destroy your diff cover. So that is your public service announcement for the start of this video. Now, let's get this van in the air and get the wheels off. So I've now got the van in the air. You can see I'm getting a little bit of movement out of the wheel and tire. Sorry for the sunlight. It's super bright, so it's casting shadows. Uh, this is the part where I tell you not to be a moron. If you don't know how to lift a vehicle this size, don't do it, go to a professional. Definitely use a jack that's rated for the weight of this vehicle. Definitely use proper uh, jack stands. And then I put the vehicle on jack stands and then I also keep the jack under there just in case you always wanna be safe. The cool thing about this, you're not actually really going under the van. You can do a lot of work on the wheel and tire here and you're gonna be outside the van. Um, anyway, just be safe about it. If you don't know what you're doing, consult a professional. All right, end of rant. Uh, Take it off the wheel on a spur, fairly straightforward. Factory lugs are gonna be a 19. 
aftermarket lugs are going to be a 17. So in my infinite professionalism, what did I grab? I grabbed the 19 mil socket. Funny story. See this right here? It's the very first company I ever had it's called Tool Tags. It puts labels on your sockets. I don't do it anymore, but it puts labels on your sockets so you can reach your door drawer and grab the right one. I still think it's cool. Still use it to this day. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go back and grab the actual proper size socket. You're going to want to remove these two screws, one here, one here. These are Torx. If you are unfamiliar with Torx, they are all over your van. Manufacturers love them these days. I think it's just because of automated assembly. Funny story. Oops, wrong way. By the way, this is a Torx T20 to get these out. Funny story. Henry Ford actually wanted to use a square headed screw on the Model T and the Canadian inventor that had the patent wouldn't respond to him. So he used the lesser of the two, a regular screw top, the Phillips, which was the only one he could get to work for mass manufacturing. And that is why to this day, Phillips screws are so popular. Anyway, Torx obviously better than Phillips uh, for screwing in and out. So this is the mud guard. And you've got one, I forgot about that. There's one here. I think it's a 10 mil. Let's go check that out. Let's take you on a journey. What is that up there? Yep, there's a nut right there. So now we're gonna get that out and keep on trucking. So now we got the whole mud guard off. So what's gonna happen is you see kind of this area where there was kind of dirt behind the mud flap. So we're gonna do is measure, like I said, inch and a half there. And then you see how this is kind of hollow back here. So we're gonna trim that out. I'm gonna leave a section up here that we can screw to. And we will cut that out so we can fit our bigger wheels and tires. Now, let me say this as well. This is not mandatory for the gorgeous stunning new owl wheels uh this is tire dependent not wheel dependent so we're putting 35s in this van which is requiring a little bit of extra cutting you don't have to but uh those wheels are size are 17 inch rims they are very similar to like a black rhino although they have a lot of advantages and a much higher load rating uh, they also have a different offset so they're going to stick out wider on the van so you can get away with not needing spacers for certain situations and although we make the best spacer in the business if you can get away without spacers it's always better than having spacers so uh, yeah let's keep going so Van Compass says two inches down from here is where we're going to start a line. So we're going to slide this to two inches. All right, tighten that down and get my pen. So two inches down from there is where we're going to start it. And where this does not have to be absolutely exact, you guys can see close enough here. People always complain. They're like, John, why don't you get someone to hold the camera for you? Well, I could, but we also got a small team and they're all inside working, trying to get your orders out. So I could have them film me, but then you might not get your orders on time. And I kind of like doing this stuff solo. It's my break from the rat race. Two inches down for that. And then inch and a half over at this kind of seam. There, so you got a line 1.5 here. 1.5. And then this is two down. I won't draw that because I'm gonna use it. So Ready, get now your, your Bob Ross on. We're gonna do a little happy bush here. We're actually not, we're just gonna do a nice uh, curvature here. So you wanna get all your, your uh, kind of third grade art skills here and we're just going to draw 
a curvature down like that. Look at that. Dude, Bob Ross, look out. I just nailed that. So you draw that right down. Now all we're gonna do is gonna take our cutoff disc and we're gonna cut that area of sheet metal out. Now let me say this, cutoff discs are no joke. A lot of people take safety stuff pretty callously. If you use a cutoff disc, absolutely safety goggles, gloves, cutoff discs are, are I don't want to scare people into not doing this. They're not dangerous if you take precautions, but they can explode. And if you don't have goggles on, there goes your eyesight. So please use safety goggles. This is not one of those things where they're asking you to use safety goggles to uh, make a clay pot. <laughs> no, this has not turned into an apocalyptic movie. Uh, I just don't like the smell of this stuff. So I put a respirator on, but do I think a respirator is necessary? Probably not. But I put one on just because this stuff gives me a headache, any burning smoke, anything. Also, you know, put on some gloves. And then you let it rip. And I'm like cutting on a $200,000 van. What I'm gonna do is clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna take the cutoff wheel off and put a flap disc on and just clean up the metal a little bit, some of the sharp parts. If you haven't used a flap disc before, these are pretty cool. So the way these work is, it's not a grinder. I don't love grinders. These are actually pieces of sandpaper that are arranged in um, kind of a stacked uh, scenario. And so as they wear off, they get down to a fresh sheet of sandpaper. It's actually a pretty, pretty cool tool. If you've never used one before, they're absolutely fantastic. We use them almost constantly cleaning up our racks before they go to powder coat. The reason I'm doing this is just to clean up that edge because those, those uh, cutoff discs can't cut curves very well. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. There's tons of sharp things here. And then once we get that cleaned up, we gotta deal with this pinch weld in here. And then once everything's done and cut, we're gonna spray paint it so that we don't get any uh, raw uh, steel out there in the world so that it can start to corrode. All right, a little bit hard to see. So what we've done here is we've trimmed this whole part here and then we've really pushed this back because the tire is actually sitting right here and you wanna make sure this, this edge here is really trimmed back. So we've got that back. They, the van compass says about a quarter inch here. We're a little bit more than that, but um, I can take that down. So I just wanna keep pushing this back and making sure that we've got clearance for that tire in there. So now we're comfortable, we got everything trimmed back. I'm just trying this on before we paint it. That looks pretty good. Put that up. All right, so that all looks pretty good. I 
took this little tab right here and bent it out a little bit. We're gonna run a self tapper into that. Now that we're kind of comfortable with everything, we're gonna paint it. This is Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. It's one of my favorite products. I use it for almost everything because it really mitigates rust. Now, obviously, my uh, bottom panels here have been Raptor lined, and so they're black. So I'm not really as worried about overspray. Obviously, if you have a painted van, you're gonna wanna tape off uh, before you do this. So while the paint's drying, you wanna grab your mud flap here. And we're gonna make a little bit of trim here. What they need you to do is enlarge this slot here for this bracket. And so Van Compass says measure one inch. So we're gonna get our calipers out again. Obviously you can use the tape measure if you want. There's one inch roughly. None of this stuff is crazy exact. So measuring one inch, put a line, and then kind of follow that down. sure you could use your cutoff disc again. I try to avoid cutoff discs at all costs just because they can move fairly quickly on you. So I'm just gonna get a really sharp box cutter and trim that fairly easily. And then we should be able to put our bracket on. Pretty easy, huh? So we've got our notch cut out. Now we're gonna actually reinstall this. Remember this little 10 millimeter nut? We're gonna put that on that mud flap and reinstall it. So that's gonna come in here, right there. I'm gonna pop this over the edge. I'm gonna reinstall that. If I can reach it here, yep. Yeah. I'm gonna look awkwardly at the camera while I do this so that we all feel uncomfortable. Tighten that down with a 10 mil socket. Next, what we're gonna do you're gonna find this bad boy in your Van Compass kit. What they tell you to do is push this back as far as you can. And then you're gonna to wanna to put this on that pinch weld. And with that on the pinch weld, you can have this flap free, right? So we're gonna push that back as far as we can. And once we get that secured, I'm gonna hold it with my other hand and we're gonna drill with, oh, of course I should have set the drill up ahead of time. So now I have to drop that. So you're gonna use a 3 16th bit here. And if you don't have a 3 16th bit, you can always hold the shaft of a drill bit up to a screw or a bolt and as long as you don't see threads on the outside of it, uh, it's gonna allow the bolt to pass through. So in this case, 3 16 will work. So I'm gonna do this again, since I had to drop it. Move this thing as far back as possible. Mark that hole. Drill one hole here, straight through. All right, now let's test our, our bolt. 
voila. So we're good there. Now, like everything, we gotta wait because we gotta paint. We do not want rusty vans. You can be a liberal in there. No one's looking at this part of your van for overspray. Make sure you get that in there. Let it dry a little bit, and then we will install that bracket. And then we're, we're pretty much done, and we can move on to the other side. So I've waited for that paint to dry. Push that through. Push that through, and then we're going to put a washer and a nut on the back side as I get paint all over my hands. So the nut with the hardware is a 3 8 uh, sized nut. You can probably get by with a 10 mil if you don't have a 3 8 To get that tight and get this all tight there and then we're going to drill straight through the mud flap Now this is going to be personal preference, but I don't love all that shiny hardware right there. So I'm going to hit the head of the bolt with a little black. A little back here too. Just take some of the shine out of it so it doesn't catch your eye from far away. Over here, in here, if you look down in there, you can see there's that flap of metal we left. And we're going to put a self-tapper right in that. And just like we did with the other one. A little bit of black and I think we can say that we're done. That is a new mud flap installed. And the cool thing is you can see how doing all that cutting is pretty much all in behind the mud flap. So even if you make a little bit of a mistake, if you form it a little bit, uh, it's going to be fine. This covers it up. So that should make you a lot more comfortable about taking on a project like this. And look, I know it's scary to cut on a hundred plus thousand dollar van, but it's also cool to learn about your vehicle. And the more work you do yourself on your van, the more you understand it and the more you can address problems if you're out on the trail and you run into a problem or have a problem. Now, granted, you're probably not going to have a problem with your mud flap, but it's just getting familiar with your vehicle, the size of the bolts, the fact that a lot of Mercedes use Torx, and you may not have a set of Torx. Get a set of Torx sockets, get a set of Torx drivers. Um, have a bunch of tools. Anyway, I'm all done with this side. The putting the wheel and tire on, hey, if you got this far, you're gonna be fine doing that. And the other side is just the same as this. So I think that's gonna pretty much end it for this portion of the video. I am, however, tomorrow, gonna get the 35s put on this and through the magic of editing, uh, we'll just go like this. Yeah, it's too early, I'll do that in a second. We're gonna throw, get the 35s ready, and then when I snap my fingers, they'll be on. Look at that. Ta-da! 35s. Now we are still having a little bit of trouble with the adaptive cruise. We thought we had it licked. We got a little more work to do, but man, do these look good. They just fit so much better. And the offset on these new wheels, look at that. Look how nice that poke is. You can see how the flap relocation in the back actually, even with the 35s, gives us more room 
behind the tire than we had previously. And you see in the front, things are getting tight, but it works. Mm-hmm. <laughs>